thank you for that uh, rather overwhelming introduction presenting me as a superman or a superhero. <laughs> uh, students, friends, ladies and gentlemen, <coughs> the director, uh, his wife, and other respected some faculty members, I'm sure, here. It's indeed a great pleasure <coughs> to be invited to deliver this talk. Uh, I am no superman or a superhero as this introduction kind of presented me as. I am just an ordinary person, an ordinary lawyer who has tried to take an interest to understand that is about what is going on in our country, what is going on in our world, what are the kind of injustices that are taking place. And I have tried to do in my own small way whatever I could or whatever I thought I could in order to remedy those and make this country and our society a more just and a more humane place to live in. However, I have been asked to talk about corruption and my PILs related to corruption and that therefore that's what I am going to talk about today. Corruption as you all know is a very very serious problem in this country. It has been a very serious problem for many many years and it was because of that there was that there was a major anti-corruption movement in this country some years ago in which I am sure some of you also participated in. Many of you must have, at least uh, many of you would have participated in it. Others would have watched it very carefully and eagerly because it was something which we thought would transform the nature of corruption, would drastically bring down corruption in this country. Why did that movement take place? What was the reason for that? One, you see, if you look at corruption, you can look at it in many ways. One of the ways in which you can look at it is what I call looking at the supply and demand of corruption. Uh, the demand for corruption increases if, if your laws, your policies and your systems are such that by giving a bribe to somebody in the government or whoever is in authority, you can earn or make enormous money or profit out of it, that climate, so that means it's also called a rent seeking climate or the availability of <coughs> rent seeking in a society which to some extent determines what is called the demand for corruption. Earlier it was thought that uh, when we had this license permit Raj, where you needed to get a license in order to set up any industry, it was thought that that was a great source of corruption because if you had to, since you couldn't do any business without a license and giving a license was with the government, therefore by uh, the, a demand was created for corruption because uh, people who were in authority, who were in a position to grant these licenses could demand bribes by way of giving licenses. However, the demand for the bribe could only be commensurate to the amount of profit that you could make by setting up that industry. Obviously, you couldn't demand more than that. It was thought that with economic liberalization, by doing away with the license permit Raj, corruption would drastically come down. Now we did away with the license permit Raj to a very large extent in the decades starting from 
starting with the 90s or actually it started with the in the 80s itself but certainly after this what is called the manmohan singh or <clears throat> the narsimha rao manmohan singh era 1991 with this economic liberalization most of license permit raj was done away with but corruption did not decrease in fact corruption in many ways at least the quantum of corruption increased very drastically from a time when Beaufort's used to be the largest corruption scam which was actually in a defense contract so of course corruption could be for giving licenses could be for giving contracts, <coughs> government contracts, etc. Beaufort was a government contract to purchase these guns. 4% of the value of that contract was supposed to have been paid by way of a bribe, 64 crores. 1600 crores was the total value of that contract. 64 crores was supposed to be the bribe. <coughs> From that time we moved on to an era where in the 2G scam, in the Colgate scam, in other mining scams, in the 4G scam where CAG reports have come out which show that the losses caused to the government in those scams were in lakhs of crores, tens of thousands or lakhs of crores. Now, <clears throat> and therefore obviously the bribe must have been commensurate to that, must have been clearly in tens of thousands of crores or in thousands of crores. So what happened? See, liber economic liberal liberalization did mean uh, doing away to a very large extent with what was known as the license permit raj. But unfortunately, economic liberalization in India came to be characterized to a very large extent by this drive towards privatization. So we had privatization of public sector industries such as Hindustan Zinc, IPCL, VSNL, various other such industries which is also known as disinvestment. We had privatization of monopoly services such as electricity distribution, even water distribution. These were monopoly services which were run by the state. We started privatizing those. And we had privatization of other natural resources such as mineral resources and with new technologies, even airwaves, which are also a kind of a public resource. They came to be privatized. Private companies were given airwaves for running mobile telephones, for running FM stations, for running television stations, for <coughs> Uh, extracting minerals etc. Now <clears throat> when you start privatizing capital, these are capital resources. So when you give away mineral deposits which are worth lakhs of crores to private companies for nothing. Actually these were all given away for nothing. They were just what was called first come first served and of course first come first served was not even religiously followed it was all manipulated as we saw in the 2G case as we have also seen in the mining cases etc and virtually